Everybody, welcome back to your prayer program on television. It's paradise. Like I said earlier, my guest is one of the best footballers Africa has ever produced. He's right here with me. None other. He needs no introduction at all. He's captain the Black Stars of Ghana for many years. He's now the chairman and coach of FC Nadia. He's a man of class and grace. My guest once again is Abidi Ayupe. I mean, you must welcome to the show, Paradise. Thank you. Hey, great to have you on the show. Thank you for inviting me. Are you looking me. good and young? Any special tonic? What is the secret, Abidi? Mm, there's no secret at all. I think it's nature. It's nature? Yes. How, how, how do you keep up with the hustle and bustle? I mean, I know you go back and forth, but still you're able to keep your shape. Mm, well, it's sometimes very difficult because sometimes we've got to a level that um, um, you put on more of a suit and tie right. than the shorts. <laughs> so um, you find it very difficult to like adjust, you know, uh, when to train and when to go to those meetings and everything. So it's very hard, but um, I try my possible best. Anytime I have a little bit of time, I try to do my sports as usual. Exactly. Boss, you're doing well for Mother Ghana. I would like to thank you. May we have an insight into your background? Growing up, how was it like for Abidi Ayupele? Well, I mean, like any Ghanaian or African uh, footballer, I mean, it has been very difficult, hard life, you know. I mean, it has been always very difficult for any African who have uh, enjoyed any football life from the beginning because uh, we had the opportunity to go to school a little bit and try and do both. But... Um, at the end of the day, uh, it gets to certain times that you have to make a choice. Mm -hmm. And whether the choice is successful or oh, right. not, you have to stick with it. And um, at the end of the day, I chose uh, the soccer, soccer. and, and uh, it yeah. has been uh, okay. It has been okay. This program is actually there to inspire the youth and let them know that no matter what, if only it's legal business and, and it's something that is on your heart, when you set out to do it, you will achieve whatever goal that you set yourself out to achieve. We just want you to go back to the days of growing up. Where was Abidi Ayu Ilibon? Because now many people think, oh, he's successful. Mm -hmm. Maybe his mom and dad were rich. Everything was on the silver platter. Mm -hmm. That is why he was able to succeed. Mm -hmm. Can we have a bit into your background, where you went to school, how it was like back in the day? Well, um, like I, I just started, um, I said it has been very difficult. My, both my mom and dad has been very, very poor. We live in a house without light and, and water, really? which was in uh, at Domi village. Um, not Domi is maybe is being known by everybody, but there is a small village beside Domi called Oko, which is beside just closer to Paraku Estates. That's right. Yeah, so it's a village with about 18, 20 houses, not much. And uh, that time you don't have uh, Paraku Estates and all those luxury houses <laughs> around you. Yeah. It's only the bush. And, um, you know, it has been uh, so hard. We walk for about five to six kilometers to get water for the family to use for cooking and as well as um, bathing and drinking and then go to school. But um, I think I had a dream that uh, I was born with uh, a dawn, if I say a dawn, I was gifted right. to be maybe a footballer. And maybe I pursued it with a lot of uh, uh, determination and uh, maybe passion. So um, I think getting to a certain age, I had some few friends who said, oh, playing in the village, you know, nobody sees you. So why don't you come to the city, which means um, we had, uh, I had a team called Great Falcons, which uh, trains at uh, Aveno, okay. near Caprice. And um, two guys took me, they were, the names were Johnny and Anoko. They were also, their sister had a, like a rice factory within that village. So they said, okay, you are talented, you are good, let's go to the city and then show what you can okay. do. Yes, yes. So uh, it happened like that. And then the, when I came, I became you know, really good in the team and I was accepted, registered. And that was between the early 70s or middle 70s. That was between 76, 77. So you excelled when you came to the city. They, they discovered you and they realized that you, you were a great player. How old were you by then? Well, I can say that uh, I was between 12, 
12 and closer to 13. But you play with guys who are like 18, 20, yeah, and like that? Oh, um, no, really, because during that time, the calls, I don't think that they, they really uh, consider age, age okay. but maybe sizes and mm -hmm. then the height okay. and all those things are being considered. And you could see that I was just the, uh, the tiniest player you can find on the ground at that time but with uh, a big talent uh, or maybe a big hat. Um, the primary school I went was at Domi Agrican Primary School, okay. which was in the village, a very small school in the village. And then um, taking a uh, bus, here and there, I have to walk to St. John's Secondary, yeah. which is on the in Sawan Road. Mm -hmm. So I'll just get there and then wait for the bus 15C or 15D, which goes to the yeah. various. Um, and then uh, um, get to Caprice and then drop down and walk to the training ground. And uh, okay, let me find out from you what inspired you? Because many will say, Oh, come on, I'm coming from a poor family. I have to go fetch water before I take my shower, walk to the training ground or catch a bus. Why should I do this? I, I should give up. What drove you? What inspired you to do that? Well, um, honestly, uh, I don't know because let me just say that um, at that time, I didn't even also know that there is so much uh, money yeah. in football at that time. And no Ghanaian player has really made it big at that time for us to say that, okay, let's follow this particular person's uh, roots. But, um, I would say that, um, I mean, maybe uh, it was by chance that uh, I pursued my talent and then dreams and uh, um, getting to a certain age, uh, I realized that, look, uh, you can make up millions of boxes if you do it and do it well. So then um, I remember when I, were, I, I was in secondary school, my French teacher told me that, look, Abedi, you are a footballer. You don't know where, where to, you're going to find yourself one day. So you better take the French lesson very seriously. I said, ah, forget it. I mean, uh, what am I? I'm not going to leave Ghana. Yeah. Even Tamale, I'm not going to leave Tamale. So what is he talking about? So the first time um, I got into Paris, uh, at the airport, and then I was waiting for the one to, to pick, pick me. Up. Yeah. And the guy delayed for about an hour, and I was sitting down, sitting down, seeing people moving here and there. And I couldn't. Do you remember your friend? Of, yes. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yes. Good. Of course, yes. Of course, yes. And I realized that look, uh, when you are young, where a grown up is going to stand and see, you can even jump twice and you won't see it. And I started thinking of that French teacher. And um, I believe that those are some of the mistakes we did when right. we were. And we'll, we'll get to that, the maestro. You know, you're one of the greatest footballers Africa has ever produced. Your name is all over. Before we get to Olympic Marseille to France and talk about your career there. You were called up to the Black Stars at a tender age of, is it 17? Yeah, 16 and a half. 16 yeah. and a half? Yeah. How did that feeling get to you? How did you take it at that age, <laughs> ready to play for the Black Stars? Well, I think uh, you should also put it this way, that it was a little bit of, uh, there is a little bit of luck mm -hmm. on that, uh, of me being in the Black Stars at that tender age. Uh, luck in the sense that, um, some of the Blaster players refuse to play certain games. So I think uh, they were fired. Okay. So when they, they were fired, they became some vacancy. So they look around, hey, who could fill in this gap? And then they look around and they, they saw me and uh, these young steps, me, Kwesi Apia, and then Dan Ben Kayede. Okay. And uh, the three of us went there and I, at least, um, we did very well. We justified the inclusive. We justified it as well. And I remember very much that, um, you know, I remember my first training at Accra Sports Stadium and I was such a tiny looking boy, very young with a bushy hair. Mm. And the jerseys I was wearing comes to my knees. And, and the House of Folk fans would say, hey, who brought this small boy when we're talking of uh, big player, you know? And, then, and but inwardly i knew that i was going to you know um, 
show to these guys that look, it's not about size, it's what you know and what you have up there and what you can deliver on the ground. That's so you, you didn't bribe anybody to get into the black class? Like, <laughs> you say, oh, people pay so that their family members can play? No, I, I don't think, no. I, I mean, my family have no money. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> my family have no money. They are even struggling to yeah, to find ends yeah, yeah. Ends meet. So you know, um, you know, bribery will never come at that stage at all. I think I was doing my fam my family at that time a favor because anytime I'm coming from Tamale to come and play down south, I bring uh, bags of uh, yams mm. and you know rice and, and corn. But you know we uh, and. Uh, our uh, vice president, he was one of the powerful men at RTU at that time. So I used to live with he and then B.F. Saini, and I was always changing from big man to big man. And I was a, a little boy, and everybody liked, liked me. So everyone was taking good care of me. So they make sure that my parents have no problem at all whenever we are coming to the South. I must say that I'm touched by your story. It, it, it makes them see that you are very responsible, even at a tender age. And that is a blast for you. Can we really get to talk about the time that you got to play professional football? Which year was this and how old were you? I mean, Look, I was just, immediately I went to the Black Stars and then we, we went to Libya in 82 and then we came down. So I would say that at the age of 17, 17 and a half, I was on the professional drive. And my first professional country was to go to Qatar. Yeah, and uh, that was the and I was there for about two years, and it was very successful. Um, I won all the trophies over there. You paid you good money as well. Well, good money. Let me tell you, at that time, I mean, I think uh, ten thousand dollars were huge. Yeah. Today is huge. Yeah. That time, which you can say is about twenty years, twenty-two years ago. I tell you, it was huge money, ten thousand dollars, and then the, um, out to you had a signing fee around fifty to sixty thousand dollars, which uh, is not my business at that time. Yeah, but um, I think it was a huge amount for both sides. Uh, me, I never had any money for the signature fees, but I had my salaries and my bonuses and whatever. So um, I really, uh, and when I came, I built a small house at Alaju, getting to the railway line. So at the age of 17, yeah, uh, 18, have. yeah. Was, hey, hmm. that's the man we're talking to. I yeah. told you, he's only on Paradise exclusive. We're going for a short commercial break. When we come back, we'll get to hear a baby story. First time outside Africa. It's something interesting. It's only on Paradise. Right here on TV. We'll be right back.